Thank you for another day that you allow us to be here. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. That we can say real to us. And we can be worthy. We ask now, God, that you would move the people from the choir law to the back door. Have your way. God, we give your name praise. We give your name glory. Because it belongs to you. Father, somebody needs a healing tonight. Let the preaching of your word heal that body in the name of Jesus. That pain that's in the stomach, that pain that's in the back. Lord, let your word go out and do what it's set for to do. Somebody today, God, is on the brink of giving up. The Father, allow them to hear hope in your word. Father, you said that the word you speak unto us are spirit and life. Father, move in this room. I promise to give your name to Glory and honor for this God. And we all say it. Amen. Come and clap your hands like you love Jesus. That is what you mean. I said clap your hands like you love Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. And he's good all the time. Amen. Amen. He's been good to us and we give him praise. Listen, I'm just humbled today to be in that feed of Pastor Rob today. Amen. He's so humble. I think each time I've been here, he sat out there. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for allowing me to uh, approach the sacred desk today to share the word of the Lord. To all the preachers of the gospel, who they here, as well as out there. Hey, hey Reverend Shaw, how you doing, man? Oh, man, Pastor Spalding, how you doing, man? It's good to see y'all. It really is. It really is. It's been so good to see you, uh, to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I'm, I'm grateful. Amen. Everybody thinks their church is great, right? So I'm not going to say I pastor the greatest church in the area, right? Because then you get in trouble and people start looking at you funny. Amen. Amen. But one thing is for sure, I pastor a great church in this city. Amen. One of the oldest churches in this city. This October will celebrate 160 years. Amen. I said that because I see a lot of them here today. Amen. One, two, about four out of five deacons here. Amen. And the deacons, y'all wave your hand. Amen. Amen. I have trustee chair, trustee back there. I think I saw some out there too, trustees. If you remember Bill Branch, y'all just stand up. Oh, y'all. Yeah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for being here. Amen. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Pastor, love y'all. Thank y'all for coming with me tonight. There's a word from the Lord, and, and I want to share this word with you today. Pray that the Lord will bless your hearts today. Allow me to pull one verse from uh, Isaiah 35. Just want to pull one verse. Verse number 8. Isaiah 35. Just want to talk about one verse. We're going to talk about Jesus. What Jesus did. Isaiah 35 and 8. Yeah, how do you say it? Bible says, and and hide shall be there. Jesus. And the way that shall be called. 
call the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over me, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, those fools, shall not be their end. And the highway shall be there. Hallelujah. And the way shall be called the way. Holiness, a highway shall be nation and the way. I want to talk from the subject today, preach rather from the subject entitled The Highway to God. The Highway to God. Can we all say that? The Highway to God. Friends, I spent a great deal of time past five years teaching our local church no branch about messianic prophecies. These are Old Testament foretellings or predictions of the coming Savior. These prophetic messages speak of Jesus' entry into the world. Hallelujah. Jesus' first entry into the world brought grace and truth. Hallelujah. Rather than judgment and punishment. Amen. All right. Simply put, these prophetic messages speak about all that Jesus would say, all that Jesus would do for the people of God. Namely, they mention how Jesus would be our highway. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah the Eagle Eye prophet, a major prophet in his own right, speaks of Jesus as our highway. And a highway shall be there. And the way in it shall be called the way of holiness. This highway, my friends, would be the smooth path that gave God's people access to the blessings of God. Prior to the highway, it was difficult for man to access God. There was a provision, there, there was something in the way that kept man from accessing the fullness of God. But Jesus Christ, hallelujah, being a highway, he made it possible. So with great anticipation, prophets like Isaiah, Malachi, and Moses, they speak of that coming Jesus. A highway for the lost. A highway for the burdened down. A highway for the downtrodden. It's a highway for the possessed, the lame, and the ill. And the prophets, they speak about a highway. Yeah. 300 times or more, the prophets pen that, that Jesus was coming. Hallelujah. He would be a highway. Yeah. Whereby man, listen to this, whereby man could travel to God. Hallelujah. And God could travel back to man. Now, I believe I'm going to say that again. Jesus was a highway whereby man could travel to God, but then God could travel back to man. You see, my friends, it was on the highway. I ain't lost, I'm going somewhere. It was on the highway where divinity and humanity locked arms and started dancing. It was on the highway where mercy and judgment decided to kiss one another. It was on the highway where grace and sin collided. It, it, it was on the highway where love and law met one another for the first time. It was on the, the highway. I wish I had church. It was on the highway, my friends, where my soul met your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Was able to meet a Savior and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My friends, we are privy to this understanding because 
of prophecy. They provided for the Jews at that time an alert to say, Jesus is coming. A highway is being prepared. If you remember John, glory to God, down there in the Jordan River. The Bible says that John looked out among the people, let his voice echo in the wind, and said, repent, repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. The prophet picked it up and said, John is on the there to talk about the highway. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. I feel like preaching a little around here. And so you see, my friends, glory to God, amen, the sign was that Jesus was coming. Amen. The one you have been waiting for. The one you have great anticipation for. The one you believe will save you from your sins. He is coming. A highway is being prepared. Jesus Christ, the highway is coming to erase all sin. And eradicate the punishment for sin. And he would do this as a highway. Somebody shout highway. The text says that a highway shall be there. And a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. You see, my friends, Jesus Christ is that highway. And God spoke to the prophets of old and shared many truths about the highway. And what I like about the highway, my friends, is that it reaches the lowest of lows while also touching the most holy of holies. You see, my friends, the highway has a way of reaching the lowest of the lows, amen, while remaining pure and full of glory. You see, my friends, the highway has a way of snatching us out of hell while also grooming us for greater works. You see, the highway has a way of delivering you from sin, but also nurturing your gifts for the kingdom of God. You see, my friends, the highway can engross himself in your mess. We can meet you at the level where you are, but he also has a way of providing a better life and a better future for you. You see, my friends, because the highway is a two-way street. God, I feel like we can go wrong. The highway you see, my friends, is a two-way street. I can't help, I can't help but to think, Pastor Spaw, when I think about this, I had to think about one of my favorite passages of scripture. Isaiah said in chapter 53, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up a man before him as a tender plant. As a root out of dry ground, he hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Brace yourselves, but surely he hath borne our grief. And he's carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded. Somebody missed their place to shout. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes. Oh, somebody help me preach here. We are healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Away with this notion that it takes God all weekend. You got to keep coming to the altar. You got to get get glad hands laid on you. You got to just do it all day. And all the devil is a liar. When Jesus died on the cross, it was a complete work. Jesus said, it is. Amen. It is. God. It's already broke. Somebody shout the highway. 400 
years before Christ ever walked the earth. The prophet spoke of him as a highway. Isaiah let us know that Jesus would not come down as a royal official. He would not be dressed as one of the royal court. Instead, he would present himself as an everyday average Joe. Amen. And that would bring a whole lot of controversy. I told y'all all lost. I'm going somewhere. The people would reject him. The people would reject his message. His own people did not he said, I came to my own, and my own received me not. Amen. But Jesus does not allow that to stop him from his purpose. Jesus understood that he was a highway that extended in both directions. He said, so beat me on the one hand, I'll save him on the other. Ridicule me on one hand, I'll deliver them on the other.
said things like, I am the bread of life. <laughs> I am the bread that came down from heaven. He began to say things like, I am the son of God. He began to cast out all kinds of devils. And they were so crazy. They wanted to be so controversial that they said he cast out spirits by the spirit of Belzebub. Said that Jesus was working, hallelujah, with a wrong spirit. They were trying to create the problems for him. Hallelujah. But Jesus being the highway, he says to them, think not that I came to destroy your law. I come to destroy your law or to destroy the prophets you believe in. He said, I came to fulfill your law. He said, because until heaven and earth pass away, one child of one title shall let nobody pass until all people feel. Jesus said, I didn't come to love you. He said, I, I came to be a highway. Jesus is, friends, a mediator of a better covenant. He is the in-between between judgment and mercy. Hallelujah. He is our way. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Many of us now, this past Sunday, I don't know what got in the new branch, but um, this past Sunday was Palm Sunday. And we had told everybody early on, you know, get your palm leaves, get your palm branches, as we do every year. And then we make sure to wave them during morning worship service. But something happened this time that has never happened before. And I don't know if nobody else noticed it, but I did. After we pray around the altar, start service, I went back to the pulpit, and I pulled out the Bible, and I started reading. Palm Sunday Scripture. Uh, yeah, yeah. And as I was reading the Palm Sunday Scripture, something took off in the church. Ah. <laughs> All I was doing was telling them what Zechariah said. Yeah. Rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Yeah. Behold, thy king cometh, yeah. riding on the back of an ass. And he shall ride on the fold of it. That's all I said to them, Pastor Spartan. But somehow or another, as we wave the palm, and as he read the scripture, the spirit got in between the scripture reading and the waving of the palms. And so when I went back home and I started preparing for tonight, he said, do you really know what happened? I said, no, Lord, tell me what happened. He said, somebody saw the highway. And you were waving the palms. Somebody literally could see Jesus riding into Jerusalem to face the which was death on a cross. And I want to tell somebody today that he is a highway. I'll tell you this last part, then I'm going to go home. Jesus is the only highway to get to God. I 
I'm going to get to white bills. But when it comes to God, Lord, there's only one way you're going to get to God. People say, I am the way. Yes. <laughs> 
Jesus as a friend. What I've been telling people right here recently is that when someone does you wrong or you've seen someone's lifestyle and it's ugly, and it's always been ugly, and musicians, you can stay there and you can be in that. And then you, you, you say, you know, this person is, they always been like that. And they try to turn over a new leaf and you say, I ain't gonna trust them. I know where they come from. I know who they people are. Your daddy won't be nothing. They won't be nothing. Well, I wouldn't trust them no further than I can see. What that says is, you don't believe the highway. That says you don't believe that God can change you. But you come to church and shout and dance about God in a chain. Because you still see people who are long on the street. That ain't how we're supposed to do it. If you believe that he is a highway of man, and he's a highway of man to get back to God, then you don't need to say nothing about nobody's transformation. If he hasn't had it yet, keep it. Keep it being God for it. Keep it first. It'll happen sooner or later. Amen.
can't get on the highway. We're going to be ready. 